Hey guys, so in this video I want to introduce two new forces, the weight force and the normal force, and also talk about equilibrium. So let's get started. So objects near the Earth, objects near the Earth, or really any around any planet, are attracted to it, to the Earth, or to whatever planet, by a force called weight. We've known this so far, in fact we've done problems um, where things fall. And weight can be written as a little w, it's a force, so it's a vector, so I can put a little vector hat. And weight is defined as simply mass times g. And g, I'll talk about that soon, is the acceleration of gravity. And this is usually down, in fact we're going to assume that the weight is going to be pulling you down. Um, it could be something different, for example if the earth is here, and you're here, you're going to be pulled sort of to the left, right? But in most cases, you're going to be on top of the Earth, or whatever object will be on top of the Earth. So mg is going to be pulling you towards the center of the Earth down. Okay, so I have to make the distinction between gravity, weight, and this little g, which is this gravity constant right here, 9.8 if you're on the Earth. Gravity is a natural phenomenon by which objects attract each other. So it's just how the world works, right? How the universe works. It's the phenomenon that says that, it's the name that we give to the phenomenon that says that every two objects will attract each other. Weight is the force that happens as a result of that phenomenon, right? So it's the name given to the attraction force. Gravity is the fact that two things attract. We call the force of attraction between the two weight, um, which can also be referred to as the force of gravity. And finally, little g is the acceleration as a result of that force. If you remember F equals ma, a force gives you an acceleration. So this is a force and this is an acceleration. And this is sort of the physical effects or the phenomenon, okay? So g is the acceleration of an object that is in free fall. Free fall, if you remember, means that the only force acting on the object is the force of gravity. So let's draw a little free body diagram. If the Earth is here and this object has no other forces acting on it, it's going to have the weight force, which I'm just going to write as mg, pulling it down. So if I write, and this is the only, uh, this is the free body diagram right there, if I write the sum of all forces on this object is the mass of that object times the acceleration that that object is going to have, and the only force is mg. In this case, mg is going down. I'm going to say that going up is positive. So this is negative mg equals ma. And the mass is canceled. And I get that negative, um, the acceleration is negative g. Um, if you're on the Earth, that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we knew that. And this is just quickly showing how that you get to that using basic f equals ma, that the acceleration is negative g. Okay, so the word gravity gets used, you know, very interchangeably um, to talk about the phenomenon. Sometimes you refer to gravity as a force, and sometimes people refer to gravity as little g. But the biggest thing is to realize that little g isn't really gravity, it's not a force, it's an acceleration. Okay, so let's keep going. An object's mass depends on how much matter makes up the object. That's the definition of mass. How many little atoms do you have? And in most physics problems, mass will remain constant. In fact, we assume that unless it says otherwise. However, g, and I'm talking about mg over here, mass is going to be constant, but g is going to change. G, g depends on the location. So on the Earth's surface, g is 9.8. But if you go to the Moon, g is one -sixth, approximately one-sixth of that of the Earth, or approximately 1.6, okay? But if you move an object to the moon, it doesn't change its mass, but g is different, so its weight will change because little g changes, okay? <clears throat> so let's do an example here. If the bathroom scale says you weigh 30 kilogram, uh, 70 kilograms, what is your real weight, okay? So it's important to realize that bathrooms, uh, bathroom scales or any traditional scales, um, they don't really measure your weight, they measure your mass, right? Or at least that's what they show you. They don't show you your weight, they show you your mass. Um, so, your real weight, weight is mg, and you're on Earth, obviously, so it's 70 times 9.8, and the answer is 686. So even though they're technically measuring your weight, 
they're calibrated to show your mass, right? Because nobody talks about, you know, um, their mass, they talk about weight, but they're actually using mass to refer to that when you say that your, your weight is 110 pounds, that's actually your mass, okay? So this is what your real weight is. You have to multiply that by gravity. Cool, let's do, um, I'll do one more example, then I want you to quickly try this practice problem right here. So an object has a mass of five kilograms on the Earth. So mass on the Earth is five. I wanna know what is its mass on the moon? And I wanna know what is its weight on the moon? So you should remember that the mass doesn't change if you go to a different planet or a different satellite or whatever. Um, so the mass is gonna remain five kilograms. But the weight does change. The weight on the moon is just mass times the gravity on the moon, which is five times 1.6, which is eight newtons, okay? If you were to do this for the Earth, by the way, the weight on the Earth would have been five times 9.8, um, which would have been 49 newtons. So you see there's a big difference, okay? So I want you guys to quickly pause the video and try to solve this one, and hopefully you get it. I'm gonna keep going but I hope you try this. So if an object weighs 300 on the sur surface of the moon, so weight equals on the moon equals 300 newtons. By the way, every time you see newtons, it has to be a weight, right? If you see kilograms or pounds, it's mass. So how much does it weigh on the surface of the Earth? So what is the weight of the object on the Earth? Well, weight on the Earth is mass times little g on the Earth if I want the weight on the Earth, I need to have both of these numbers. I know little g on the Earth, I know gravity, the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth, but I don't know this mass. So I'm kind of stuck here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here with this information and try to figure that out. So weight on the moon is mass gravity on the moon. And this weight is 300. So I'm able to find mass because I know gravity is 1.6. So mass of the ma of the object is just 300 divided by 1.6, and this rounds to 188 kilograms, which I'm able to then plug it in here. So the weight of this object on the Earth is its mass, 188, times the gravity of the Earth, 9.8, and this gives us, if you round this to three significant figures, you get 1840 newtons. This is the final answer for this. Hopefully you got it, and let's keep going. So, second point that I wanna make on this video is that whenever you push against the surface, the surface pushes back. This is because of Newton's third law of action-reaction. So you push on something that something pushes back on you with the same force, the same magnitude, but opposite direction. When you do this to a surface, the force that the surface pushes back against you with is called normal normal okay and normal can be represented by big n some books and it's a vector so i could do this some books will use a little n so that it's not confused with newton uh, which is a big n or the force of normal like this um i'm going to use big n but again a lot of books and a lot of professors will be using little n i'm just used to using big n so that's probably what i'm going to write most of the time okay so normal is a reaction to a surface push. If you push on a surface, there's a normal force. Normal means perpendicular, right? Normal is just an engineering term. It means perpendicular. And perpendicular in turn means 90 degrees, okay? Um, it means perpendicular to the surface. The symbol for perpendicular is a little penis. It looks like this, okay? This is the symbol for perpendicular. And by the way, the symbol for parallel looks like this. So you can think of this as a penis and a vagina. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so to figure out the direction of the normal force, what I can do is if I have, let's say, a box here, I can just get the penis and put it on the surface. And the direction that it points is the direction of the normal force. So if you have some harder questions like this, um, we'll see this later. I can put it here on the surface and I see that the normal force points this way. 
And the last example I want to show you is if you have a wall, a vertical wall like this, and you have a box, and you push this box against the wall, um, the wall is going to push back with a force normal this way. Okay? So a very, very important point is that there is no equation for normal. Okay? There's no equations for normal that you can just plug in. You're going to calculate the normal force by writing F equals MA. We'll do a lot of this, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, but there's no equation. It depends on the situation. And the last point in this video, so again, normal is a reaction to a surface push. It means that you have to have a surface to have normal. Okay, the last point in this video is that whenever forces on an object cancel each other, uh, the object is at a state called equilibrium. So you get equilibrium when forces cancel each other. So forces cancel each other means that the sum of all forces equals zero. It also means that the net force, which is the same thing as sum of all forces, equals zero. So look what happens. If I write sum of all forces equals ma, and all the forces equals zero, this means that this right side equals zero. So that means that the acceleration is zero. Okay? So equilibrium means forces cancel, the sum of all forces equals zero, and it means that acceleration is zero. Okay? Now, it does not mean no motion. It doesn't mean that you're not moving, that you're stopped. It means no acceleration. It means that your change in velocity is zero. Let me give an example. If you have a car on cruise control, right? You press your cruise control button, what does it do? It moves with a constant speed. So it is moving. Its velocity is not zero. But its forces have to cancel. How do I know that? That's because its acceleration is zero. It keeps the same velocity, acceleration zero, so that means that the forces must be canceling. And basically what happens is that if you're in a car, there's some sort of friction that makes you slow down. So that's why if you stop hitting the gas, you just let it go, the car is going to slow down. Um, but to avoid that, what you do is you have the engine push with a force that's the same as your friction, right? And if these forces are exactly the same, then they cancel perfectly and your acceleration is zero and your car keeps cruising at the same speed. Okay? So having talked about these three topics, I want to do um, two examples here real quick. So for each of the situations, draw a free body diagram and calculate all the forces on the object. So I have a one kilogram object sitting on top of a table. So one, here's a table. Now this isn't really a free body, free body diagram. Free body diagram has to be just a dot with forces on it. The first force I'm always going to draw is mg. And by the way, we ignored mg in all previous problems, right? I didn't even talk about it, but every object is going to have an mg pulling straight down. And I can calculate this mg right here if I want to. Um, so mg is mass, which is 1 times gravity, 9.8. So it's 9.8 newtons. So this mg is 9.8 newtons. I don't have to say that it's negative because it's going down because I already have an arrow next to it. So we know that it's going down. All right, any other forces? Well, this 9.8 here that's pulling on this box is making the box push up against the surface. So the surface pushes back with a force, and we call that force normal. Now, what's the magnitude of that normal force? There's two ways you can do this. The short way is pretty simple, is you realize that this box isn't moving from here. Why? Because it says that it sits on top of a table. It's not just magically flying up or it's not breaking through the table. It just sits there. So it's at rest and it's at equilibrium. It's not accelerating. So the forces have to cancel. And for the forces to cancel, it means that the magnitude of the, of the normal has to be the same as the magnitude of mg. So if mg is 9.8, normal has to be 9.8. Think of this as a tug of war. One force is pulling up, the other one's pulling down, and they cancel each other. So this is sort of the fast way where you're going to be able to see a 9.8 here and right away realize that this has to be 9.8 as well. The long way would be you would write the sum of all forces equals ma, but you know that this is at equilibrium, so it's really going to be the sum of all forces equals zero, right? And because the acceleration is zero. But on the left here, I'm going to list my forces. I have two forces, and they equal zero. Now let's list my forces. Normal is positive because it's going up, 
So I'm going to use the convention that going up is positive. We'll keep doing that. And mg is going down, so it's negative. Okay, and then look what happens. Normal equals mg, which is the same thing I told you earlier. Without And we did that without having to do all of this, just by realizing that the forces had to cancel for this thing not to have any acceleration. Okay, so this is the long way. I get 9.8, which is only the magnitude, but I know that the direction is up. Okay, so in this situation here, I have a 2 kilogram object that is hung by a light rope. So here's sort of the ceiling, and here's a two kilogram object. And let's just assume the floor is somewhere over here. It's hung, so it's not touching the floor. I want you to pause the video and do the same thing I did. Draw a little free body diagram, connect all the forces acting on this block, uh, on, in, on this object, yeah, and um, find those forces, calculate those forces. So pause the video, I'm gonna keep going. Hopefully you tried it, and down here, uh, first force I'm going to draw is mg, and mg is just mass times gravity, so it's 2 times 9.8, so it's 19.6 newtons, okay, and then any force is going up, yes, otherwise this object would be accelerating down, it's hung, so that means that it has to be a force pulling it up, and that force here is a tension, there's no normal, because it's not pushing against the surface, the block doesn't even touch a surface. And tension has to be 19.6 newtons because these forces have to be the same so that they cancel each other. If you wanted to do this the long way, sum of all forces equals ma. There are two forces, but the acceleration is zero. So this side here, I can just make it zero. Why? Because this is at equilibrium, it's not accelerating. The forces are tension up and mg down. So tension equals mg. It's the identical setup that I had last time, except now instead of having normal, I have a tension. So this is 19.6. And I hope you got that. And that's it for this one.